Now, one of the, the things about limb formation is some of the questions that you may or may not ask yourself as you're looking at the limb formation is, how does the body know how long to make the limb? When does it stop the limb from growing from the proximal to the distal axis? The other thing that you start asking yourself is, why are our palms on this side and not on this side? Why do we cl have a closed fist in this way in left-right hemispheres rather than going the other way? You know, why is our thumb on this side rather than down on that side? And then on this side, why is the thumb up here? So we're looking at the general axes of how the limbs form. And obviously, we have two sets of limbs. We have the fore limbs and the hind limbs. So I'm going to go through a little bit of anatomy here and a little bit of the overall axes again. When we look at limbs, we, one of the axes is proximal distal. Proximal has to do with everything close to the body. Distal is everything away from the body. So when you hear me talk about distal today, that's at the tip or end of the developing limb. Proximal is things closer to the body. Anterior, posterior. Anterior is where your thumb's at. Posterior is where your pinky's at. So when we look at the anterior, posterior axis, mainly we're going to look at how the hand forms and how the thumb forms in the anterior axis and how the pinky and the digits form in the posterior axis. And then obviously we have the hemispheres or the medial lateral where we look at left right and why is it that our hand closes this way on the right hand and this way on the left hand. So these are the major axes that we're looking at. Uh, usually we're not going to say left right, we're going to say dorsal ventral. So in the case of hands, dorsal is the back of your hand, ventral is the palm of your hand. Those are the dorsal ventral axes for the limb development. So let's go over a little bit of anatomy. There are three main sections of any limb in a vertebrate. You have the stylopod, the zygopod, and the autopod. Now those are the general terms for any limb, whether it's a forelimb or whether it's the hind limb, whether it's a wing for a chicken or legs, uh, front legs for a mouse or the arms for a human, whatever the case may be. Now obviously there are different types of bones depending upon the vertebrate organism. We're going to spend most of our time talking about humans. So this, um, this is just an illustration of um, the forelimb because we have here the humerus. So the humerus is the first bone or the first section, that's the stylopod. In our legs, it's your femur. So your femur would be the stylopod in that limb. As far as the zygopod goes, we have the ulna and the radius in our uh, um, forearms or our forelimbs. In our hind limbs, we have the tibia and the fibula. Okay, so we have that as part of the zygopod for the, uh, our lower extremities. And then the autopod is essentially the hands and the feet. Now, the wrist bones we call metacarpals. When you look at the bones in your ankle, right above your feet, we call those metatarsals. Um, and then you have the digits. You have your fingers and your toes. We just call them the digits. So stylopod, this is more proximal to your body. This is the first area of the three main areas of any limb. Zygopod, ulna radius, or tibia and fibula, depending upon whether you're talking about the forelimb or the hind limb. And then the metacarpals in your hand or metatarsals in your feet, those are all part of the autopod, as well as the digits. Um, so mostly what we're going to focus on today is how do you form these three different sections? Because it's one thing to form bones. We're going to learn in the next lectures how bone forms, how endochondrial ossification works, and how the long bones form, and even some of the short bones, how they form. Um, but the question becomes, why does it make the humerus here and the ulna and the radius here? Why, how do you get that difference between these two? And then, how do you get the digits of the hand? So there are a number of different genetic factors and, and things. And this is really where a lot of the dynamics of limb regeneration come into play, too. Okay, um, now obviously not all organisms have the same number of digits. We're going to focus on humans, obviously, when we look at the digits. So we will be looking at all five digits and how they form. Um, but that really becomes the big question. It's because mesoderm, which forms bone, is differentiating as the limb is forming, but the most proximal mesoderm will form the humerus or the femur, and then the next um, uh, group of mesoderm cells will form the ulna and the radius, or the tibia and the fibula, and then the last one will form the digits. So the biggest question becomes, how? How do you get that patterning set up? So let's look at the early stage of an embryo. 
If you look at this, now this does show you the three germ layers. We have the ectoderm, which is in blue, mesoderm, which is in red, and endoderm, which is in yellow. Now, there are multiple areas of mesoderm. And for now, I'm just going to talk about two main areas. One is um, the somites. Okay, so the somites start becoming various different areas. I'm not going to get into the difference between myotome, sclerotome, syndotome, and all these others yet. That's for lecture 10. Um, so th these are the somites. Remember, the somites are these regions right here, these kind of round um, mesenchyme, uh, or they start out as mesenchyme, they coalesce and become epithelial, um, uh, balls of mesoderm that form all along the trunk of the embryo. Those, that's the somite. That's part of the, uh, some of the mesoderm. Another group of mesoderm cells are we call the lateral plate mesoderm. And this is the one you're going to pay close attention to because it is the lateral plate mesoderm that induces the formation of what we call the limb bud. So there are inductive signals, paracrine factors, that are secreted by the underlying lateral plate mesoderm. And that's what causes induction of the initial limb bud uh, as your limbs start forming. Now, cells from the somites and from the lateral plate mesoderm combine together and start coalescing and forming, and that's what creates this bulge that, will be, that starts the limb bud or the formation of the limb bud. So you do get cells from both of these groups. However, it's the lateral plate mesoderm that has the inductive signals that is causing the formation of various um, genetic factors to occur in the overlying ectoderm that is necessary for limb formation. So this is kind of why this is also part of the, um, this lecture, is because a lot of what we're going to talk about is the ectoderm and its overlying role in the formation of the limb bud, even though most of the limb has a, a conglomeration of uh, different cell types, mostly mesoderm, but there are ectoderm components as well as you're forming the skin and things of that sort. But the digits and the muscles and the bone, that's all mesoderm. Okay? So these mesoderm cells that are being uh, contributed from the somites and the lateral plate mesoderm, we, the, these somites we call paraxial mesoderm. You can, uh, I don't think I make that distinction in this lecture, but it's paraxial mesoderm and this is lateral plate mesoderm. They contribute cells and that's what starts the pushing out of the ectoderm. So if you look at an embryo, you can see that this is where, where we start getting the formation of the limb bud, is where these mesenchyme, these uh, uh, mesoderm cells will become mesenchyme. They'll migrate in, and they'll start pushing out against the ectoderm, and they'll start the formation of the initial limb bud, as you can see it right here as well, both in the forelimb and in the hind limb. So you get um, uh, formation of, of limb buds on both sides. Okay, so let's look at some of the inductive signals some of the paracrine factors that are responsible for this. The, there is a expression of a lot of genes, but they become restricted to a very particular area. So FGF10 is actually one of these genes that is necessary in the formation of the limb bud. Now, typically, it's expressed all the way through here, this mesoderm. However, you do get some uh, wind signaling that causes it to stabilize at very discrete regions. So what ends up happening is you get this restricted area where FGF10 is being expressed. And only in those areas do you start the formation of the limb bud. So that's why you don't get limb buds forming all the way down the axis of the uh, embryo, is that there are certain factors that restrict the uh, um, which lateral plate mesoderm is going to express FGF10, okay? So that's some of the initial signals. Now, one of the things, too, is there are actually two different wind signals. Even though they both do the same thing, you have wind 8C in the hind limb area that's going to form in the lateral plate mesoderm that stabilizes FGF10. In the forelimb, it's wind 2B, but it does the same thing. It stabilizes FGF10 in where the forelimb is going to form, and then you get these two restricted regions where the limb buds are going to form. So the inductive signal from the lateral plate mesoderm is FGF10, but that's not the, the, the whole of it. Okay? There are actually other genes involved in this process. One of the things that happens, though, is you get reciprocal induction by both the lateral plate mesoderm and the overlying ectoderm. This is what this is illustrating, is that FGF10 will ultimately cause FGF8 to be expressed in the ectoderm. 
Well, the ectoderm then secretes FGF8, and that sustains FGF10. So that's why it's called reciprocal induction. Now, in fact, this is the same in both the forelimb and in the hindlimb. So the formation of these limb buds have the same mechanism, FGF10 in the lateral plate mesoderm, FGF8 in the ectoderm. And these just keep these uh, um, genes uh, constantly going um, in this early induction process. So the question becomes, why don't we form legs in our forelimb? If the genes are the same in the forelimbs and the hindlimbs that start forming these limb buds, what's different about them that makes it so that we have arms instead of legs here? Well, they found a couple of genes that are responsible for this. For example, in addition to the stabilization of FGF10 and FGF8, in the forelimb you have a gene called TBX5, and it's restricted to the forelimb. And they found that this is one of the major differences between the forelimb and the hindlimb that causes hands to form, or in the case of chickens, wings to form, or in the case of mice, the forelimbs to form, um, is TBX5. And in the hind limb, you get TBX4. So these are related genes, but they do turn on, these are transcription factors that will turn on separate genes that then cause only arms to form in a forelimb and humans and, you know, and wings and chickens. And TBX4 causes the hind limbs to form the legs or, um, or whatnot, given the various vertebrates. So we're still in our early stages of understanding even how the initial formation of limbs form. You'll see today, I'm going to give you two theories of, that are uh, diametrically opposed to one another in terms, if it's one, it's not the other. And we don't know which one it is yet. So that's how much we, we how little we know in comparison. We know a lot, but we're still in our uh, early stages of really understanding how limbs form.